In this video, we'll be discussing further the Nirvana crystals or stones. I say further because I have created a previous video on this that I do not believe is on Blue Star Rising, so I'm placing it in a playlist for you so that you can access it after you watch this video. And that playlist also includes um, the video I made on the Sapphire Pillar. So you would watch the Sapphire Pillar first, then the one on the Nirvana Stones, um, because it's going to give you a lot more information in one respect to the Nirvana Stones or Crystals. However, when I made the, the video on the Nirvana Crystals, which is fairly recent, by that I mean it was probably about two years ago, not 20 years ago. <laughs> I mean the material doesn't come from, you know, a long time ago. The Sapphire Pillar certainly does. But the Nirvana Stones are a new thing for me to know about. And uh, at the time I brought them through and gave this information in the video, um, I didn't know some things I know now. So I'm continuing with the story about them. What was missing from the other video was the fact that these beautiful crystal smooth stones are able to bring forth a frequency that you can visually see that responds to you. When you look at the crystal, if you're in the inner earth, the hollow earth, and you hold one of these crystals, you look into it and it will respond and it will create these little bio uh, tendril lights and frequencies in it that are receptive to you, healing, informative, connective, synergic, all of this. But let's go back to the beginning a little bit here. So I'm going to give you first a synopsis on the sapphire pillar. Again, you're going to get a lot more information in the other video, but this is a synopsis. This information was given to me by Thoth Intelligence in probably in 1980, 1981, sometime around then, but he has referred to it many times since then. The sapphire, now this is S-A-F dash F-I-R-E. The sapphire pillar, also known as the Mount of Sapphire, is positioned at the central field or travex of the inner planetary terrain in the ocean of the inner earth, acting as a pivotal point of energy and light within the earth's hollow dimension. It is a glorious spectacle of refracted light, cascading in radiant colors and dancing with the Earth's tides. This location serves as a cosmic marker and is intensely magnetic, drawing in energies and reflecting them back in a symphony of light. The lower regions of the sapphire pillar grow more solid, forming an assemblage of ice crystals that are tightly bound by magnetic forces, creating what could be described as a glacial heap. The transformational capabilities of the pillar channel and conduct energies through its crystalline structure. The sapphire pillar is not just a physical construct, but also a spiritual beacon within the inner hollow earth and other dimensional worlds like Numus Ohm, the first stage of the new earth star. It represents a point of convergence for celestial and terrestrial energies, facilitating spiritual transformations and serving as a conduit for higher dimensional beings and energies. Now, the sapphire pillar in its magnetic presence is not exactly like it would be on the surface of the earth. It would probably crush everything if it was on the surface. It's so powerful. But because it's in the inner hollow, there are different dynamics in there and different aspects of geomagnetic fields. So it's able to be very powerful and strong without disrupting the currents of the entire hollow earth and the whole planet. Yet it's certainly the, the sapphire pillar certainly affects the whole planet. You know, when we say that the, the hollow earth is in, removed in a slightly different dimension, we don't mean in a completely different, different dimension, just in a slight one. So that means that it is still very much intrinsic to the whole operational field of this planet on all dimensions. Returning to the Nirvana stones or crystals 
they're stones, but they're actually crystals, so I kind of go back and forth in how I describe them. They are a result of the sapphire pillar. You see, the sapphire pillar is in an ocean. It's still rooted to the earth. I say rooted, not, you know, so much physically, but geomagnetically. But it is in the ocean. So the stones around it, you know, the pebbles, the rocks, the boulders, whatever, they are transformed into these nirvana crystals. Now, how far this goes out into the radius around the, the sapphire pillar, I don't know. But the sapphire pillar is very large. Uh, I think Thoth said in a, just a little sailboat, you know, without a motor or anything, it would probably take about eight hours to go around it. So it's, it's big. But the, the radius of crystals that are the stones that are transformed into crystals around it. I don't know the exact dimensions, but it, I would imagine it goes, you know, a healthy way outside of that, that initial uh, point of connection. And they don't just turn into crystals. They receive the holographic field of the sapphire pillar, each one a refraction of the whole. So they're very smooth for the most part. I said they were all smooth before, but no, some of them are little, they have a little bit edges on it. It kind of depends if they break off, what's going on under there, you know? But most of them are very smooth. And even the ones that are kind of uh, fragmented a little bit on the edges, they still are very smooth on their surfaces, you know, other surfaces. And uh, if you, you know, saw them on the beach and you weren't interacting with them, they would just be a very clear crystal. You go up to that crystal. Let's say you're walking on the beach in the hollow earth, okay? And here is a nirvana crystal lying there because they do wash up at times. And you go, ooh, a nirvana crystal. <laughs> and you pick it up, or you even don't even have to touch it. You just look at it. It's going to sense you before you even look at it visually. As you come up to it, it's going to start sort of activating a little bit. But when you look at it, it's going to start showing you its beauty. And it's, and it's going to speak to you in these colors, these bioluminescent colors, and not only colors, but geometries. And also, it looks like little plants kind of in little fields growing in there. And in some ways, it looks like a, um, a computer matrix at times. It does these little matrixy things in there. You know, it's moving and, and adjusting and showing itself to you. When people uh, take these crystals, these nirvana crystals in the, in the hollow earth from the seashore, they dive for them. Well, first of all, it's not a free for all. There aren't people just plunging into the sea, collecting nirvana crystals by the back, by the packfuls and selling them on eBay. <laughs> because, you know, the, the hollow earth persons, people, you know, our genetic kindred, they're, they're not, they don't, they don't have any avarice. They don't have any feeling like I have to have a whole bunch of these things. You know, it's like, these are sacred crystals. And actually they're overlighted or governed, let's say, by the, by the Dakini in the inner earth. So everyone knows that. And no one would think of just grabbing one and running off with it. Now the ones that wash up to the shore, if they come across one, they know they can take it because the, it has been gifted to them. It, they don't wash up a lot. So when one comes up on the shoreline, it's like, oh, this is for me. But they wouldn't go diving for them unless the bikini uh, requested this. And there are certain persons who dive for these crystals under the auspices of the bikini. And at certain times, and a certain selection of these crystals are available to people who go through initiations. They also go into the temples and centers of learning. You will see them, you know, uh, the large ones uh, placed as a, you know, like a place where you can go and stand in front of it and receive the energies. And some of them are very delicately um, with, uh, holographic lasers that's a whole nother subject i won't go into here but holographic lasers are very delicately crafted on the surface just a little to give a sort of an opening so you can see this energy in a certain way 
but that's only for, you know, the temples and places like that. So the whole idea of the Nirvana crystals, it's a very sacred thing. So it's not just a bunch of people grabbing these crystals for their homes and their personal use. And yet it's not an elitist thing either. It's just that you need to be able to be called for it. Called not by the Dakini, but by the, the actual sapphire pillar. And the Dakini are very much the messengers of that pillar. So they are sort of the go-between in most cases, but not if the if it's gifted to you from the sea and it just washes up in front of you, you know. So that's kind of how it works. Now the images I created for you here with the AI art are overlighted by Thoth, and I feel they're pretty much representative of how these actually look in a still picture. I'm going to try to do a little animation magic with one or two or three, but um, you know, it, it, I, I won't be able to give the beauty of the motion of the, the frequencies as they're moving inside the crystals. It's, it's not like a, a kaleidoscopic thing. It's more like, you know, how clouds float through the sky. Maybe if there's a brisk wind up there, they're going to float through the sky just a little faster, or change form as they're doing so. It's kind of like that in the crystals. It's not exactly subtle, but it's not extreme, sorry, in between how they fluctuate and change. But I'm doing the best I can here to deliver the image and not just so that you can see what it looks like, but so that you can feel it. As oh, with all my art overlighted by Thoth, this is an activational image. So as you see and watch these images, and meditate upon them as you're watching them going through the video with the music, you know. Um, know that you can receive the frequencies of them into your being. Now another aspect before we start that activation is, and you'll hear more about this in the other video on the Nirvana Stones that I've created previously that you will have access to in the info box below. You can purchase a regular crystal uh, uh, that's smooth, you know, and, and, and clear. And also selenite is good, even though you can't see through it. He recommends that as well. And you can set the frequency of the Nirvana crystal in it. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to suddenly change into one of these beautiful crystals you're seeing here. But it will have a modicum of that frequency within it. So what I'm going to do is, after you've seen all of these images that I'm going to show you, and it'll be made very clear at the end of the video. It will say, this is the template to use to create your own, well, frequency Nirvana crystal. You can take a screenshot of it and you can use it uh, to, uh, you know, you print it off and you put, well, actually, at this stage, you can either print it off and put the crystal on top of it. Or you can place the image on your phone and you can radiate the crystal with it. You put the crystal on top of your phone with the image displayed and leave it there for 30 seconds. Or you put it on top of a printed template, which needs to be left at least an hour if you do it that way. So that's what you're going to be going through here. You're going to see the crystals and get the feeling and receive the energies off of them activationally. And then at the end of the video, and I'll make it very clear that this is the template and you can print it off, or put it on your phone and activate your purchased crystal as I discussed here just in this video, how you do that. Now, you can make as many Nirvana crystals in this way as you want, because it's not the real Nirvana crystal, understand, but it is containing a frequency of that for healing, for a connection to your synergistic being with all the universal elements that the sapphire pillar represents. So here we go. Let's embark upon this journey together. Mm -hmm. 